Well then, this video has been quite a long time coming. After quite a few people requesting it across social media, and whilst I'm at home from university for the summer, welcome to my Big Finish Collection Showcase of 2020. The first time that I've done a Big Finish Collection video since the previous one in the summer of 2018. I think that it's fair to say that my Big Finish Collection has grown quite a lot since then in many different areas. I didn't see the point in doing a collection video that was simply reeling off the titles of the many different releases that I own, and this time round I'm going to be doing brief summaries of some of my personal favourite releases and episodes that I generally recommend. Hopefully this may give you a little bit of inspiration for future purchases of audio dramas that you may enjoy. This collection update is going to be quite a long one, so I recommend grabbing a cuppa, and as always, I hope you enjoy. Now something to get out of the way straight away is that this video will be showcasing the entirety of my Big Finish collection, however not how it is currently displayed, as this is how it is currently displayed. As we can see we have Jago Lightfoot up there at the very top on the floaty shelf, and then just below we have this grand pyramid block thing of Big Finish. Basically, long story short, I have quite a small room as you probably all know by now, however it means that I don't have enough room to have each and every Big Finish CD nicely lined up in order how ideally it could be. For the purposes of this showcase, basically I'll be using the floaty shelf at the top and lining them all up and then changing them every so often to get a look at each and every release. I just thought that it would be handy to show how my big finished collection actually is on a day-to-day -day basis prior to filming this video. It does look a little bit like chaos, however it is organised chaos. I know exactly where everything is because the vast majority of it is in order. So we start off my Big Finish collection video of 2020 in a little bit of a different place that the vast majority of Big Finish listeners would, and that is of course with the Doctor Who spin-off, Jago and Lightfoot, who's Christopher Benjamin and Trevor Baxter as the Infernal Investigators, Henry Gordon Jago and Professor George Lightfoot. Of course, if you listen to my Big Finish reviews, you will know I absolutely adore this series. Starting off with the first release, Ill Hogney Murders, as written by Andy Lane. This is a companion chronicle, and it is a brilliant reintroduction to Jago and Lightfoot. I've not listened to any of the other Companion Chronicles with the exception of this one. However, I've heard it is in fact one of the best within the series. And those compliments do of course extend to the first box set of Adventures within the Jago and Lightfoot series. An absolutely incredible box set of four adventures really establishing the series as well as the surrounding characters of Conrad Asquith as Inspector Quick as well as Lisa Bauman as the brilliant Ellie Higson. A really strong box set and a perfect job Jumping on point for the series, as you could imagine. Next up, we have Jago Lightfoot Series 2. Again, this continues to develop the location of Victorian London, as well as giving a focus to the darker sides of Victorian London, a vampiric series, very gothic horror, as well as throwing in a little bit of trouble for Ellie Higson as well, really growing that relationship between the Infernal Investigators. Next up we have Jago and Lightfoot Series 3, which does of course see the reintroduction of Louise Jameson into the world of Jago and Lightfoot. Again, this series has a brilliant balance between fairy tale sci-fi as well as the general historical layout of Victorian London. I can recall very much enjoying this series. And then those compliments once again extend to Jago and Lightfoot Series 4, which does follow a rather similar style to that of Series 3, once again continuing the adventures of Louise Jameson as Leela. But not only that, we also get a few challenges with the relationship between Jago and Lightfoot, as well as Colin Baker playing Cornelius Dark, so no prizes for guessing why I absolutely adore this season. Next up, we do in fact leave the box sets of Jago and Lightfoot for two Doctor Who special releases, an extension of Jago and Lightfoot Series 4, starting off with Voyage to Venus, which does of course see the Infernal Investigators travel out into space and time, a brilliant, entertaining story, and to be honest, if you've not listened to the previous box sets, this is a great to jumping on point. And then of course following on from that theme we have Voyage to a New World. They have a little bit more of a personal connection for Jago and Lightfoot. These are in fact a very recent addition to the collection. I've listened to them a number of years ago. However I've just got round to adding them to the collection physically. Absolutely adore the covers that we've got. Of course there is the alternative Doctor Who cover in there but I love that they've supplied Jago and Lightfoot alternative designs. Next up we have Jago and Lightfoot Series 5. This is where things start to get a little bit experimental 
environmental, we have this absolutely glorious cover. As we see the Infernal Investigators land in 60s London, it's a really fun box set. I can recall absolutely laughing my head off when listening to this one. It's a lot of fun, a great character piece for Jago and Lightfoot, seeing them in a brand new environment, and I can't wait to get round to revisiting this one as a part of my Jago and Lightfoot review series, because I have listened to all of these so far, as well as reviewed those, so check them out if you want to see more details. Next up, we move into more unknown territory for Jago and Lightfoot, of course, due to us sadly no longer getting more stories due to the passing of Trevor Baxter. Yes, my Jago and Lightfoot review series is still continuing, however, on a much more slow down basis, I'm drawing it out for as long as possible, so I can enjoy the series and listen to all the adventures without binge listening the entirety of it, because if I had no self-control, I would listen to the entirety of it all the way through without stopping, then I would have no brand new adventures to enjoy, so I'm spacing it out so I can enjoy it a lot more. Therefore, I have absolutely nothing to say about Jago and Lightfoot Series 6, and likewise for Jago and Lightfoot Series 7. Although what I will say is it does look like it has a lovely Sherlock-esque cover, and it's great to see Ellie and Conrad on the cover there as well with the 221B door, so I'm looking forward to getting around to that season at some point. Next up we have Jago and Lightfoot Series 8, which I have listened to. It's a great season, and of course features Encore of the Scorchies, a musical episode, and it's one of the best things that Big Finish have ever created. It's wonderful, and to be honest, Series 8 is worth it for that episode alone. Next up we move on to Jago and Lightfoot Series 9. Seeing Jago and Lightfoot go on a little bit of a voyage, a little bit of a holiday, because I've had a lot of adventures in the past and the need time to unwind and de-stress, and this is apparently a box set all about that, set on a boat with various sea creature monsters. So I'm very much looking forward to getting around to that box set. Again, in similar lines to that of Jago and Lightfoot Series 5, it will be a change in layout, therefore a little bit more different to usual. Next up we have Jago and Lightfoot Series 10, which naturally I have a soft spot for. It was my first ever Jago and Lightfoot box set. Not necessarily the best jumping on point, I understood it. It has a lot of references to the previous series, and it has some great characters in there, and naturally I enjoyed it because it led to me buying all the other box sets and absolutely adoring the series. So yeah, I recommend going back to the very beginning, I suppose, if you want to listen to the stories in its entirety. Next up we have Jago and Lightfoot Series 11, which has a connection to the Big Finish main range, as this box set was released around the same time as the Master Trilogy, and you will obey me, Vampires of the Mind, the two Masters. As a result, we have a box set focused around Jeffrey Beavers as the Decayed Master, as the well as the return of Colin Baker as the Sixth Doctor. Again, no wonder I absolutely adore this spin-off as much as I do, because their relationship with the Sixth Doctor is absolutely brilliant. On to Jago and Lightfoot Series 12, which is an unusual one, because we get to see a return to the Series 2 plot of the Vampires, which is great to have that link back to show how far the Infernal Investigators have came. However, as to actual details of the plot, I can't recall too much. I can just recall it being pretty much perfect Jago and Lightfoot. This is why I adore the series. So yeah, I probably recommend this one, no doubt. Go and check out the review. And then, of course, finally, and rather sadly, we have the final Jago and Lightfoot full box set, which is Series 13, which rather fittingly revisits the story of the Talons of Wang Chiang. We have a story around the giant rat from that episode, which, let's face it, who wouldn't want an episode focused around the giant rat? And yeah, it's kind of a fitting end for the full series format, seeing Jago and Lightfoot delve into a parallel world. And we move on to some of the singular releases because I intend on getting all the Jago and Lightfoot stories eventually physically to add to the shelf. We have my one and only Fourth Doctor main range release so far, which is The Justice of Jalxar, as written by John Dorney, featuring the late Mary Tam. I can recall that episode being pretty fun. Next up, we have Jago and Lightfoot and Strax. I picked this up at the Doctor Who Festival a number of years ago and is actually signed by Lisa Bauman when I met her. Again, a nice reintroductory for the box sets. And I think that if you are a new series listener looking to get into Jago and Lightfoot, Foot. This is a pretty decent story to start with. Next up, we have a departure from audio dramas and essential, basically, an essential release if you are a fan of Jago and Lightfoot, Benjamin and Baxter, in conversation with Christopher Benjamin and Trevor Baxter, with Nicholas Briggs as the interviewer. I suppose it is a lovely release, a great insight into the lives of the two main protagonists, and again, I loved it. It was a great insight and a really emotional one as well. And speaking of emotional, pull out the tissues, everybody. We have the final ever box set for Jago 
Jago and Lightfoot, which is of course Jago and Lightfoot Forever. An absolutely brilliant box set and one that I adore because it also features Jago and Lightfoot the Revival, the two short trips, which does of course feature the 10th and 11th Doctors, and Jago and Lightfoot Forever does of course use restored audio from the previous box sets to bring Trevor back to life for this episode. And yes, I am not ashamed to admit that I cried. I cried quite a lot. It's an emotional end, however, a fitting tribute to the series, and again, one of my personal favourite Big Finish releases of all time. So now we move on to the biggest and longest running aspect of the Big Finish catalogue and that is the Doctor Who main range that usually consists of adventures with the 5th, 6th and 7th Doctors and the occasional 8th Doctor adventure in there as well. Now personally I find it quite hard to catch up with this range because the vast majority of releases are £15 singularly, meaning that the vast majority of these releases have been purchased within sales at a discount. Of course the Big Finish main range between releases 1 and 150 and now going out of print, the vast majority of them are already gone, meaning that a lot of them have been bought within bundles because the vast majority of these on the shelf are one particular Doctor. No prizes for guessing which Doctor that is, because I do originally intend on having all of his audios to add to the shelf, so I have them all that I can listen to from the very beginning. So we start off, in fact, with the very beginning, or one of the earliest adventures I have, and it is the Holy Terror, one of the Holy Grails of Big Finish. I absolutely adore it. It is a brilliant story, as written by Robert Sherman, as well as featuring Robert Zizek as the one and only shapeshifting Wiffadil Penguin Frobisher. Again, I love this one, I've reviewed it, uh, and I've complimented it to the high heavens. So yes, listen to that in case you haven't already. And then following on on a similar theme, we have the Maltese Penguin, a bonus release once again featuring Frobisher. And of course, on that note, Big Finish, release more Frobisher stories. A lot of Big Finish listeners want him back. He is a great companion. Next up, we move into the now out of print 50 to 100 range, starting off of the Wormery featuring Katie Manning as Iris Wildtime. Got no idea what this story is about, however it looks considerably eerie. Next up we have a Sixth Doctor and Evelyn Smythe story, Arrangements for War. And then we move on to a story that I have actually listened to. It is Medicinal Purposes featuring the Sixth Doctor and Evelyn into a historical Edinburgh that has been affected by the plague. A really lovely story. I absolutely love the relationship between the Sixth Doctor and Evelyn within this one. And this story also features a rather unknown actor called David Tennant. I don't quite know what he did after featuring within this big finish release. I'm hoping that his career excelled from this point onwards. Perhaps he's became a rather high profile actor or something like that. I wish him all of the best. Next up we have another Sixth Doctor story because of course we do. Surprise, surprise. The Juggernauts featuring Terry Malloy as Davros as well as the return of the Mechanoids. Next up we have Catch 1782 with a rather unusual Christmassy looking cover. And then we have the continuation of Arrangements for War with Thicker Than Water featuring both Mel as well as Evelyn Smythe. Now rather surprisingly we now depart from the Sixth Doctor adventures, I know shocking, for a Seventh Doctor story, Live 34, which this episode is another one of my personal favourite Big Finish stories, focused entirely around a radio broadcast, it is a really experimental piece of Big Finish, again I've reviewed this one because I loved it so much, I highly recommend it if you want to listen to some experimental Big Finish. Next up we continue with some stories, I've got no idea what they're about, however I can't wait to listen to them at some point, including Peer Pressure, as well as the Nowhere Place. This one features a train on the front, therefore I'm naturally quite excited to listen to that one. Then we have a Cyberman related set of stories. I do believe there's another one that I haven't got as of yet, featuring the Sixth Doctor and Perry in the Reaping, with a rather lovely looking Earthshock Cyberman in there. Then we have the continuation of that storyline in the Fifth Doctor release, The Gathering, again with an older version of Tegan. And yes, I do only have this story to fully understand the Sixth Doctor one, I'm not even going to lie. Then we have The Year of the Pig, another story that I've got absolutely no idea what that one's about, however it does feature Nicola Bryant as Perry. And now we move into the stories that introduce the big Finnish sidebar that sadly is no longer with us. We have ID, as written by Eddie Robson. That is a three-part story, therefore this release does also feature the singular part episode, Urgent Calls, which I do believe is free on the big Finnish website, and it is another lovely bit of experimental big Finnish, so I recommend listening to that one. You have no excuse, because it is, of course, free. Next up we have The Wishing Beast, as written by Paul Mars. Got no idea what that one is about. I've read the 100s upwards with The Condemned as written by Eddie Robson. I do believe that this episode features the return of Charlotte Pollard, the 8th Doctor's companion. However, now she becomes the 6th Doctor's companion because tiny whiny stuff and all of that. Next up we have the continuation of that storyline with Brotherhood of the Daleks, the lovely looking Dalek on the front cover there, and of course all red and silver as written by Alan Barnes. We continue the Dalek theme with the next release being Patient Zero, 
as written by Nicholas Briggs. Again, another story that I've got no idea about. And then we move into the Sixth Doctor and Fraser Hines trilogy of stories, which again, I've heard a lot of positive things about this story in particular, as well as the other episodes as a part of this trilogy. So we have City of Spires, as written by Simon Bovey. And then we continue with the Sixth Doctor stories with Wreck of the Titan, as written by Barnaby Edwards. This one is now out of print. I can remember that because I purchased it just before it went out of print. Next up, we have Legend of the Cybermen, also featuring Wendy Padbury as Zoe. Very much looking forward to getting around to that one because I do love a good Cyberman story. Crimes of Thomas Barusta, as written by Jonathan Morris. I do believe this is a part of a much larger Big Finish plot relating to this guy called Thomas Barusta. He's had a number of references for our Big Finish here and there. This episode features Evelyn Smythe, but also the debut of Lisa Greenwood as Flip, who would later become a companion. The Feast of Axos, which knows prizes for guessing which classic monster returns in that one. And then we have The Silver Turk, which I've got on the shelf as a part of the Mary Shelley trilogy, of course, as written by Mark Platt. I've heard it's good. I've listened to it, and it is indeed good. Therefore, it is on the shelf, and it is a great compliment to that of Spare Parts as well. A very popular Big Finish story. Return of Flip in the Curse of Davros, as written by Jonathan Morris. I listened to this one quite a long time ago. However, I can recall enjoying it quite a lot. Then we move into the 50th anniversary series. I can't lie, I got this one because I really, really liked the cover, and it was on sale. That's a theme with Big Finish collecting. 1963 fanfare for the common men. This is on the must listen to very very soon list because I've been meaning to get around to that for quite a while and doing this video has just reminded me that I still haven't done it. Next up we have more Sixth Doctor stories with the antidote to oblivion as written by the Vengeance on Varos writer Philip Martin as well as featuring the return of Sil. I've heard mixed things about that one. Then we have a rather essential listen from what I understand for Sixth Doctor fans, The Widow's Assassin as written by Nev Fountain dealing with the multiple different versions of Perry. Continuing that trilogy. We also have The Masters of Earth, as written by Mark Wright and Kevin Scott, with a lovely looking cover on that one. The Rani Elite, which is the first of two stories I do believe to feature this incarnation of the Rani, which I haven't listened to. And then we have Last of the Cybermen, once again continuing this relationship between the Sixth Doctor and the 1960s Second Doctor Companions, and another really lovely looking cover on that one. A main range story that means a lot to me, of course featuring the debut of Miranda Rayson as Constance Clark, it is Chris Cross as written by Matt Fitton, the first ever Big Finish new release as a part of the main range that I reviewed uh, way back in 2016 from what I can remember. This release has a special place in my heart. Continuing that trilogy, we also have Planet of the Rani as written by Mark Platt. Again, I've heard mixed things about that episode as well as the final episode of that original Constance Clark trilogy with Shield of the Jotun as written by Ian Edgington. Take a look at the Master Trilogy that I was talking about when taking a look at the Jago and Lightfoot box sets, starting off with Annie Will Obey Me, as written by Alan Barnes, featuring Peter Davison as the Fifth Doctor. I can recall really enjoying this one and provided some great character development for Jeffrey Beavers as the Master. Next up we have the Vampires of the Mind, featuring Alex McQueen as the Master, of course originally appeared within Dark Eyes, so it's great to see him with another incarnation of the Doctor. And then we have the rather mind-boggling final episode of this trilogy, being the two Masters as written by John Dorney, featuring both Jeffrey Beavers as well as McQueen, and of course Sylvester McCoy. If you are an experienced Big Finish listener, I recommend listening to this one. However, if you are a new listener, it's probably quite a complex one to understand because I still struggle with it to this day. Next up, we have Order of the Daleks, featuring one of the most experimental covers ever, a glorious looking stained glass window Dalek there on the very front, a lovely release and a rather experimental Dalek story. And then finally, we move on to my most recent Big Finish main range release and a rather recent one at that. It is Blood on Santa's Claw, a series of short stories that were released in the later half of 2019. Some random singular releases that I've got as a part of my collection. We have Big Finish's 50th anniversary special which is Light at the End as written by Nicholas Briggs. Again I quite like this one, it was one of my first experiences ever of Big Finish. Free Beavers in there as well as a number of different cameos. Next up we have a bonus Sixth Doctor release in Trial of the Valyard, an excellent 
complement to that of Season 23, of course recently released on Blu-ray. And then we move on to a rather lonely lost story in the collection. Again, I just purchased this one because it was on sale. I thought I may as well treat myself. It's The Hollows of Time as written by Christopher H. Bidmead. I've heard there's a few twists and turns in that one. Next up we have a rather older release as a part of the Big Finish Back catalogue and it is the 2002 BBC drama Real Time featuring Evelyn and the Sixth Doctor. I can recall watching this one on the animation a long time ago and again really enjoying it. I don't think I've ever listened to this one though so I'll probably get round to it eventually. Next up speaking of lonely CDs we have a Lonely Companion Chronicle. I got this one in Doctor Who magazine when they were flogging them away for free after they started to stop the printing of the Companion Chronicles featuring of course Wendy Padbury as Zoe. Next up we have a novel adaptation with Nightshade featuring the Seventh Doctor and Ace as Cole really enjoying this story back in the day and of course it's rather experimental due to it being a novel adaptation. Another recent one that I've added to the collection and another bonus release it is Cryptobiosis. It features a boat. I can't lie I got this one because it features Colin Baker because it was I think £5 on the Big Finish website due to it being a bonus release. I got it to add my delivery price up to £50 so I got free delivery. I can't even lie but hey it's on the shelf now I'll get round to it eventually. Next another Sixth Doctor related release this time round this is Colin Baker. A great interview piece with Colin Baker once again interviewed by Nicholas Briggs and is in fact signed by him as well. And then finally for this part of the collection we have an Unbound release being Sympathy for the Devil featuring Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier alongside the excellent David Warner as the Unbound Doctor. I listened to this story quite a long time ago however I can recall absolutely loving it. And then finally for this part of the shelf before I need to move on more box sets we have the beginning of an era that I previously didn't have on the last collection video however I'm very glad that I have it now because it has been recommended to me over and over and over and it is a perfect jumping on point for those of you that are looking to get into Big Finish. It is of course the 8th Doctor and Lucy Miller Adventures Series 1. I purchased these around a year ago I would say as a part of a Big Finish bundle sale so I have the entirety of Series 1 including Blood of the the Daleks Part 1 as well as Blood of the Daleks Part 2 as written by Steve Lyons and it does of course feature Hayley Atwell. Next up we have the second story in the line being Horror of Glam Rock as written by Paul Mars as well as Immortal Beloved as written by Jonathan Clements. I have in fact reviewed all of those stories so far from the Lucy Miller Adventures as a part of a review series so check those out if you want to. Next up we have a story that I listened to a while back it is Four Boss as written by Eddie Robson. I've heard that this one isn't particularly liked it's kind of Doctor who does Scooby Doo? But to be honest, I found it rather fun. It's a fun listen, and again, very new series for this format, and a great one if you are looking to get into Big Finish because all of these adventures are so easy to listen to. Story that I've not listened to as of yet it is No More Lies, as written by Paul Sutton, featuring Julia McKenzie, not as the 12 this time round. And then finally, we move on to the Series 1 finale Human Resources Part 1, as written by Eddie Robson, and Human Resources Part 2, featuring the return of the Cybermen. Have a break from the original run of Lucy Miller Adventures with a recent release from the summer of last year. I do believe it would in fact be just over a year at the current time of filming since I reviewed this one. It is the Further Adventures of Lucy Miller Volume 1. I in fact listened to this and then went and purchased the bundles for Series 1 and Series 2. So again, this is a perfect jumping on point, a great set of stories, very easy to listen to, very new series-esque plots. I love how self-contained this box set is. It's a nice package of adventures and it's rather satisfying to listen to so yes listen to the review of that in case you haven't already move on to the next set of Lucy Miller adventures with series 2 I've not in fact listened to these ones so I have nothing to say as of yet so Dead London we also have Max Warp which has also seen a record release very recently exclusive to Asda next up we have Brave New Town featuring the return of a Doctor Who monster as well as the Skull of Sorbeck Grand Theft Auto this one also features a train on the front so I'm very excited to listen to that one again then we have the return of a classic monster with the Zygon who fell to earth. Mix things about this one, be it good, be it bad. I'm looking forward to getting around to it though, however. And then finally we move on to the final stories of series two, being the return of the Sisterhood of Khan in Sisters of the Flame, as written by Nicholas Briggs. And the final story of this run, Vengeance of Morbius, again as written by Nicholas Briggs. I do intend on getting around to series three and series four at some point, not purchasing the bundle, much like how I've done for series one and series two. However, at the minute, I'll probably listen to these ones and then once I've listened to those go out and purchase the second two series of adventures.
And whilst we are on the theme of Paul McGann as the 8th Doctor, we may as well continue with the box set adventures. For those of you that have seen my collection video back in 2018, you will recall that I purchased Dark Eyes. And I said I would get round to listening to Dark Eyes. Well, here is Dark Eyes on the shelf, and I've made just as much progress as I did back in 2018. Because I listened to that much Big Finish as it is, keeping up with the most recent releases, let alone going back and taking a look at a whole several hours worth of quadrilogy stories, but I will. I'll get round to it eventually. But for now, it's on the shelf. It's a future investment, I suppose. Starting off with the critically acclaimed Dark Eyes 1, originally intended, I do believe, to be a singular box set, and it did, of course, spark the very beginning of the box set format on Big Finish, that we now know pretty much as the most common format, because the vast majority of ranges are now moving to that. Next up, we have Dark Eyes 2, featuring Alex McQueen as the master, as well as Nicola Walker as Livchenka. Have nothing to say about that one as of yet. Dark Eyes 3, again a lovely simple cover on this one with the 8th Doctor and the Master. And then we move on to what is looking like an epic finale for Dark Eyes, featuring the Dalek Time Controller there in the very middle, including Paris and the UK and a few other places. Of course there's Sontaran in there as well. So yes, I'm really looking forward to listening to those box sets just when I get the time, which I don't have at the minute. Sorry. Now moving on to the next quadrilogy of 8th Doctor stories, because I can actually talk about these ones, is Doom Coalition, yay! Featuring the introduction of Mark Bonar as the Eleven, an absolutely brilliant concept. This was my first ever 8th Doctor box set way back in, I think, 2016, something like that. And to be honest, I thought it was a good jumping on point. We have the introduction of Helen Sinclair as portrayed by Hattie Morahan, who does of course go on to feature also within Ravenous, as well as Stranded. And yeah, it's a decent introduction part of the series. I can recall the first episodes, the Eleven and the Red Lady, I think it's called, being a lot stronger than the latter two episodes of the box set. I still thought it was alright, a good introduction. Next up we have Doom Coalition 2, which I'm not particularly much of a fan of at the minute. I think that when I listened to it back in the day, I didn't fully see where the series was going. It didn't really link overall to the Doom Coalition plot within my mind. I just didn't understand the direction of the series. Of course you also have the introduction of River Song there, as portrait by Alex Kingston, who would go on to be in a few of the future box sets as well. So it's an alright set of adventures, I should probably get around to listening to Doom Coalition again at some point, although I need to listen to Dark Eyes as well, I need to listen to everything, let's face it. But still, Doom Coalition 3, this is a brilliant box set, I really did enjoy this one because it's it sets the series on a good track, because we have some great adventures in there. I can remember in particular, I think it's the two-parter in the very middle, it's a great way to set the series on the right footing, it's a grand adventure set set throughout different cities in Europe from what I can remember, as well as featuring Alex Kingston as River Song. We get further development of Mark Bonar as the Eleven, as well as the John Heffernan, I think it is, as the Nine. He's absolutely brilliant and a great take on an alternative incarnation. And yes, I really did enjoy that release. I thought it was really good. And speaking of complex stuff, we have Doom Coalition 4. This again continues exactly the same strengths as the previous box set, being grand, and we have Gallifrey corruption, people that you can't trust. We have the Weeping Angels in America, we have the return of Rufus Hound as the meddling monk. It's got lots of things going for it, although it is a series I recommend to experienced Big Finish listeners, because it feels like that you need a whole graph and plotting of that graph to fully understand this series. But it's still alright, it's a good climax overall to the Doom Coalition quadrilogy. The next quadrilogy of Eighth Doctor Adventures, we have my buddy Ravenous. I absolutely love Ravenous. I think it goes with all the strengths of Doom Coalition. However, it takes away some of those more complex elements because we have a rather easier to follow plot arc as well as a number of standalone stories. You do kind of need to listen to Doom Coalition to fully understand Ravenous because we have a lot of the plot arc threads being continued into this series, which I think is one of the main criticisms of the Eighth Doctor era in recent years. It has been that you need to listen to virtually, I think, over 48 hours worth of backlog listening to fully understand some of the most recent box sets. Of course, Stranded is a new jumping on point, so we finally get to start afresh with the Eighth Doctor. But yes, uh, I think that Ravenous One is a great box set. In particular for this one, I love Mark Bonar teaming up with the Candyman. I think that the Candyman stories are absolutely incredible. I love the way they've been written. Next up, we have Ravenous Two. Again, another nice box set. We have a two-parter, I think it is, in the very middle, nice Christmassy atmospheric story. 
screen, as well as Liv returning to the planet of Kaldor, which does then set in motion the Big Finish the Robot series, which I have been reviewing recently, and is pretty bloody good. Next up we have Ravenous 3, which kind of continues the mega plots of Big Finish and the Eighth Doctor, now that they have the new series license. We have a lovely story in this one called Companion Piece, which is again essential if you are an Eighth Doctor fan. Great series, very grand in its scope, and to be honest, I enjoyed this. It's a little bit of fan service, but it's good. It sets Ravenous on the right track, as well as dealing with the whole concept of the darker times within Gallifrey mythology. And then, of course, you conclude Ravenous with Ravenous 4, the mega cast list that is Ravenous 4, featuring virtually all of the currently existing incarnations of the Master, and rather excitingly, the first time that Eric Roberts has featured within an Eighth Doctor story since the Doctor Who movie back in 1996. Yes, it's a great box set. It features Derek Jacobi, Michelle Gomez, a number of others. And yes, it's a bit complex in parts, but I enjoyed it. It's a good conclusion to the series and a grand massive plot, avoiding all spoilers. Moving on now to the beginning of the next chapter within the Eighth Doctor's life, it is the most recent addition to the collection, to be honest, or one of the most recent additions, Stranded One, a brilliant jumping on point for those of you that haven't listened to Doom Coalition or Ravenous, it's stylized as a new jumping on point for Eighth Doctor fans. It's also a refreshing take as well, we've kind of left behind the grand scope sci-fi universal adventures that Dark Eyes, Doom Coalition and Ravenous and the Time War possesses, and we have a much more scaled back series of adventures, a bit like a soap opera opera, where we have a very large, if not the largest ever, reoccurring cast at Big Finish. So yes, it's a good box set, I've recently reviewed that, go and check that out. Next up we have the annual Eighth Doctor series, which is Time War, the Eighth Doctor Time War, a series that originally I was a bit unsure about, however, now I've listened to all of the current three box sets in quick succession, I've grown to respect this series a lot more. Of course, if you're a fan of Daleks, timey-wimey stuff, it's a good series. The Eighth Doctor is also a little bit more angry and stressed in this one. So first box set is all right, dealing with a more personal variation of the Time War and how it affects people personally. Next up we have Time War 2 featuring Dr. Orgeron as well as the introduction of Julia McKenzie as the Twelve. A fun box set, I think that Julia McKenzie is great throughout this release and a striking departure from that of Mark Bonar as the Eleven, but yes it's a fun box set and Dr. Orgeron has my heart, he's a great character. Next up we have the third and final current adventure from the Eighth Doctor Time War series, of course the fourth volume is due out in I think it's September this year featuring the return of Ken Bones. Very exciting indeed. We have the third volume this time featuring the War Valyard as well as continuing that general timey-wimey stuff that you get to see within the Time War. What I like about this box set in particular is that we have a smaller scope version of the Time War showing how the Time War affects rather small lesser known planets as opposed to the grand scope Dalek invasion stuff. So yes a lot of fun. It's a decent series although it won't be for every one but we have finished all of the adventures to feature Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor. It only makes sense to delve deep into the Time War with the adventures of the War Doctor, starting with Only the Monstrous. Now, it has been a while since I've listened to the entirety of the War Doctor series. I can recall it being a lot of fun, very similar to that of the Eighth Doctor Time War. Lots of timey-wimey stuff, Cardinal Alistra as portrayed by Jacqueline Pierce, and some nice Time Lord development, as well as, of course, further exposure of the War Doctor as portrayed by John Hurt, who is now sadly no longer with us, and as I mentioned, I think, within the last collection video, I am simply so happy that Big Finish got the new series license when they did. Had it been any later, we probably wouldn't have seen this series be completed, so I'm very grateful that Big Finish have been able to create this, because without it, we would have only had one episode with the War Doctor, and this series provides some great episodes with him, as well as further development of the character. I do believe that Only the Monstrous was one of the best box sets of that year, voted by Big Finish listeners, so that must say something I suppose. Next up we have Infernal Devices, once again more timey-wimey goodness throughout this box set, and then we have Agents of Chaos featuring the return of the Sontarans as well as the Dalek Time Controller. I can recall this series doing a few experimental stuff with Daleks, literally Daleks experimenting on each other to create these weird and wacky variations of Dalek. Then finally we have very sadly John Hurt's last ever contribution to the Doctor Who universe with Casualties of War featuring the return of Louise Jameson as the 
Leela, a much older, kind of vortex-affected variation of Leela, continuing on from the Gallifrey series. So yes, a nice conclusion, however a sad end for the War Doctor. And whilst we are on the conversation topic of the Time War and characters that have only appeared within TV Doctor Who once, however deserve to be in TV Doctor Who a lot more, we have a Big Finish series that probably regular viewers of my Big Finish reviews will be thinking, oh dear, he's about to get compliment heavy again about that specific series. And guess what? You are right. It is the War Master, only the good. This box set in the entire 20 years of Doctor Who audio drama at Big Finish is one of the best things that Big Finish have ever made. It is absolutely incredible. And if you take anything from this Big Finish collection video, it should be that this box set should be on your cards to purchase at some point in the very, very, very near future. Even though there is currently four volumes of the War Master available, along with a further one being released this year and another in 2021, all of these box sets so far have been self-contained. You can listen to them in any order you want, so if a particular box set interests you and it isn't the first one, then you can go and listen to that one without needing to worry about any of the other series. Only the Good in particular is an excellent portrayal of the War Master. We get a well-rounded set of stories focusing on his character. We have him interacting with the Daleks. We have him taking up the guise as the Doctor. We have him employing the role of a companion, basically Cole. And Cole is a great character, again, very real, very emotional. And the War Master gives him this wonderful idea of since we are in a time war and we are surrounded by death, pick out a planet, any planet, and you will save it. I'm a Time Lord, so I can't fear with other peoples and planets. It is your responsibility to save them. And the Skyman is, again, one of the best hours of audio drama on Big Finish ever. A great box set. The climax of this box set as well is a essential moment for fans of Derek Jacobi as the War Master. A great, well-rounded box set, and it is satisfyingly self-contained. I do. I love it compliments continue. However, we do have a change in format with the Master of Callus, which initially I wasn't particularly too excited by. Because this time round we have a whole four-hour story set basically on one world, and the War Master employs the allies of the Ood. And because the Ood, of course, have the hind brain and they can contact each other mentally, and the Master is somebody who uses psychic powers, basically it is a match made in heaven. And it's called Master of Callus for a reason. It is an evil, manipulative, dark, brilliant drama and again I absolutely love it. Check out my review where I compliment it to the high heavens. Next up we have Ridge of the Time Lords featuring Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor and yes they do solve the whole idea of how come the Eighth Doctor can meet the War Doctor however he doesn't recognise him in Utopia. All of that as always on Big Finish is completely well rounded and established. The Ridge of the Time Lords is in fact my least favourite of the four volumes so far but that is not saying it's not very good. I still enjoyed it. It is a great manipulative box set really showcasing those manipulating characteristics of the War Master in some smaller stories. Again, we have him taking up kind of four separate adventures. However, it leads to one grand plot and one grand plan at the very end. It's a fun box set and a great character drama, and Paul McGann is very good in it as well. Next up, we have the War Master Anti-Genesis, which is another gem. It's basically focused around Genesis of the Daleks and throwing the events of Genesis of the Daleks out of the window and changing them. We have the alternative Master from the Unbound universe as portrayed by Mark Gatiss. We have Narvin in there as well in case this box set doesn't sell it enough as it is, as well as multiple variations of Dalek involvement within the Time War. And we have lots of references. Admittedly, a little bit of it is fan service, but it is a great four-hour drama depicting some great character moments for Derek Jacobi, but also the Daleks in there as well. So yes, a great series. I highly recommend it along with all of the others, and I can't wait for the next box set that I think is coming out in October we continue with more events within the Time War, this time around the Doctor Who spin-off series Gallifrey. I kind of feel like Big Finish fans who collect the physical CDs do this thing. I say that Big Finish fans do it generally because I do it generally and if I say that other Big Finish fans do it, it makes me feel better about myself and my actions when it comes to addictively buying Big Finish audio dramas. Basically, if there's a sale relating to the Gallifrey series, 
I'll buy a box set, I'll look at it and go, oh, that looks pretty, I'll purchase it and I'll plonk it on the shelf. And apparently I can't listen to the vast majority of these because I need some of the previous events within the series to fully understand it. Therefore, I've kind of just accumulated a line of Gallifrey that I've got no idea what it's about. So we have Gallifrey with the Bronze Daleks on the front. I've heard that's a good season, apparently, and the first ever cover to feature new series Daleks. We have Gallifrey behind enemy lines, or just enemy lines, I suppose, with a skull there on the front. A Gallifrey Time War Volume 1. I have actually listened to this one. I really did enjoy it. It features Derek Jacobi as the War Master. Spoilers, that is why I enjoyed it. It's a great series. Irving Braxia Tell is in there as well. And it's a great establishing box set. Talk about the family as a whole on Gallifrey, Lala Ward, Louise Jameson, Narvin, Irving. All of it's brilliant. And I think I did. I did. I really liked it. I think it's one of my favourite box sets from that year. Next up, we have Gallifrey Time War Volume 2. And for time round, we have the return of Terence Hardiman as Rassilon himself. And it's a great box set again. In. Lots of fun dealing with Gallifrey, political corruption, all of that. Then we have the most recent box set within the Gallifrey series being Gallifrey Time War Volume 3. I've had this on the shelf since early 2020. However, I've not listened to it. I've not listened to it. I've not reviewed it. I'm waiting to review it at some point. It's now been over half a year since its original release. And I still haven't done it because I think I was under a lot of stress when it originally came out. And I was having a few mental breakdowns. Probably. That makes sense. I was also doing uni stuff at the same time. So that is probably a logical conclusion that I made so I never got around to listening to that one sadly but I will get to eventually no doubt in time for the next release coming out in 2021. Now we move on to some of my other classic series Doctor Who box sets, all of which I have reviewed, so I'm going to go through these quickly so you can check out more details if you wish by checking out the full reviews that I have done. Starting off with the David Bradley Adventures as the first Doctor, all of these box sets follow the format of having a sci-fi story and a pure historical to in keep with the classic series of 60s stories. The first volume features the Destination Wars as well as the Great White Hurricane, a really great pure historical on that one that I thoroughly enjoyed. Next up we have Volume 2, which features the invention of death, as well as the barbarians and the samurai. Volume 3, featuring the Phoenicians, as well as TikTok World, including Caroline Ford coming back as an older, mysterious variation of Susan. And then, of course, most recently, we have the First Doctor Adventures, Volume 4, featuring the return to Scarrow, which I did really enjoy, along with the last of the Romanovs, as written by Jonathan Barnes. And it's a great story set in Russia on the brink of collapse, a really strong, pure historical. Work. Next up, we move on to the Fourth Doctor Adventures, as we have Series 8, Volume 1 there, featuring Jane Slavin as Anne Kelso, as well as the Fourth Doctor Adventures, Volume 2. Again, I've reviewed these, it's focused around the Daleks' master plan, because the entire series is called, I do believe, the Syndicate Project, the Syndicate Master Plan, and it's a fun series. Again, self-contained, a great set of adventures, a few standalones in there as well, and Jane Slavin is a brilliant portrayal of a companion. I have the Adventures of the Seventh Doctor, of course we're going to see a lot more of this format in the future once the main range has ended in early 2021. A decent box set featuring the Virgin New Adventures companions on four separate adventures. Classic Doctor's New Monsters Volume 1, the particular highlights in this box set were the Fifth Doctor story with Weeping Angels as well as Judoon and Chains with the Sixth Doctor. A fun box set if you're looking to get into Big Finish. Of course no Big Finish collection will be complete without a little bit of Bernie Summerfield, starting off with the New Adventures of Bernie Summerfield Volume 1 featuring the Seventh Doctor as well as Ace and an adventure with the Daleks. I thought it was all right. It's a decent box set, although not as good as this one. But because we have the Bernie Summerfield Volume 3 Adventures in the Unbound Universe, this is one of my personal favourite Big Finish box sets of all time. All four adventures on this set are absolutely brilliant. We have Mark Gatiss as the Unbound Master once again, as well as David Warner as the Unbound Doctor, who I absolutely adore. A really strong set of adventures with that one. And the compliments do also extend to the fourth volume of Adventures with Ruler of the Universe, again featuring the return of a few familiar faces. Next up we move on to the more recent Bernie Summerfield release which is Volume 5 as we see the Unbound Doctor travel into our universe for a set of adventures that is just really generic Doctor Who. It's fun sci-fi space travel stuff and I can't help but feel that this box set is kind of the calm before the storm, especially given what we are seeing within the new adventures of Bernie Summerfield Volume 6 coming later this year. Then finally for 
Bernie Summerfield on the shelf, we have the anniversary box sets of the story so far, featuring a younger variation of Benny, Irving Braxia Tell, as well as Bernice's partner from a number of years ago. A fun introductory box set for Benny to get a general idea of some of the eras that Benny has encountered throughout her space and time travels. And then we have the story so far, Volume 2, with the Unbound Doctor, the Valyard, and even the Dravins in there as well. So yeah, a fun box set and a great summary of Benny's life on Big Finish. So now moving on to the world of new series Doctor Who, we have most notably Unit the New Series. Now I have reviewed all these box sets, so check out those reviews if you haven't already. Starting off with Unit Extinction, a really good take on the Autons, really plummeting them into 21st century Earth. A great invasion piece I thought was thoroughly enjoyable and a strong start to the series. Next up we have Unit Shutdown, which is a rather unique box set featuring a unique monster that's never been seen within Doctor Who. Quite a bold move, it wasn't as enjoyable as Unit Extinction. Extinction. Next up we have Unit Silenced, which I think is a box set that people do forget quite a lot to be honest, and I thought it was very good. It's kind of the silence intercepting a UK election. It's a very political thriller. If you're a fan of Bodyguard, I imagine that you'll quite like that one. Next up we have Unit Assembled, which admittedly is a lovely, glorious piece of fan service for classic series Doctor Who meets new series Doctor Who. If you're a fan of the Third Doctor era, this is a must. I think that Joe Grant, Captain Mike Yates, as well as Sergeant Benton are absolutely incredible throughout this box set seeing them going up against the Silurians and Sea Devils. Depart on the fifth box set to a rather unusual singular format, as opposed to the grand four-hour scope adventures with unit encounters. I must admit, I felt that this box set kind of lacked a direction, especially compared to some of the other box sets, but it still had a few decent concepts in there. The sixth series, which is Cyber Reality, again, much like the Auton Invasion Unit Extinction, this box set plummets the new series Cybermen into 21st century Earth, have official intelligence, modern day technology, and really embracing the whole elements of Cybermen and developing over time and cybernetic evolution. We also get an episode of Derek Jacobi in there as well as the War Master, in case that wasn't exciting enough as it is. And it is a rather unusual rare box set because you don't really have many stories, if any stories with the exception of this one, with new series Cybermen in Doctor Who. We have Unit Revisitations featuring a two-part Wirren story, which I found thoroughly enjoyable, and then two other episodes which were not as good as the Wirren two-parter, but I still thought were all right. I think that, again, if you're a fan of the Wirren, this is no doubt a good box set for you. And then finally, before the series went on a hiatus, we have Unit Incursions. And again, much like Unit Encounters, I kind of felt like this box set lacked in a direction, although admittedly, it was lovely to see River Song meet up with the new series unit team. So yeah, overall, an interesting end to the series before it returns. I'm hoping that they go for the four-hour format when the series does eventually come back, because I think of that works a lot better, especially with the large unit team. Some of the new series box sets that I've picked up along the way, starting with Missy Series 1. To be honest, if you are a fan of this incarnation of the Master, this is a must for you. I think that Big Finish have done a very good job of representing this rather visual incarnation of the Master on audio. However, of course, I've already covered within this collection showcase how much I love the War Master as a series because it has so much direction. It feels very planned. However, with this series, I can't help but feel that it does lack in that direction and I would love to have a box set entirely dedicated to the early days of this incarnation of the Master, literally picking up after the events of the end of time, filling in some of those holes. Where is the TARDIS? Why in some episodes does Missy have the TARDIS and some episodes not? I see Rufus Hand as the meddling monk as well. However, as I say, I would love to see that direction with the future series. I have Rose Tyler Dimension Canon. Now this box set is a lot of fun, giving development to the Tyler family and I think that the entire re current cast are absolutely excellent. Billy Piper, Camille Kadori, and Sean Dingwall in particular are incredible as the Tyler family. The Endless Night, as written by Jonathan Morris, is a great dystopian future style story discussing the end of Earth and it's slowly going into riots and looting and things like that. It's a very depressing and hard-hitting story. However, it works very well and the entirety of this box set kind of follows that format, the end of days. Equally, there's also an episode, the final episode of the box set, and in fact, the last part 
party on Earth, as written by Matt Fitton. King Rose, Tyler and Jackie return to a much different version of the power state and dealing with that whole concept of family and loss is a box set, especially if you like the character. And following on from that, we have The Lives of Captain Jack, Volume 2. No prizes for guessing why I own this in my collection, because it is one of the best cover arts that have ever been released on Big Finish. Of course, John Barrowman meeting a classic incarnation of the Doctor, and Colin Baker is absolutely brilliant throughout this box set. Of course, you have a story with them together, which is Peace of Mind, as written by James Goss. And equally, this volume does also feature Driving Miss Wells, focused around the Russell T Davies era newsreader, Trinity Wells, discussing the media and how it affects people. And yeah, I really enjoyed that volume, and I highly recommend taking a look at the review if you are interested. Next up, we have one of the more recent releases, Volume 3 of The Lives of Captain Jack, seeing Camille Cadori and John Barrowman team up in Crush, dealing with public transport and not looking at people on public transport. It's R and J, seeing John Barrowman as Captain Jack meet none other than River Song. And again, if you're a fan of new series Doctor Who, this episode is absolutely packed with references to pretty much 2005 era Doctor Who right up until the ending of the 12th Doctor era. So, and I definitely recommend taking a look at that one. Outside the government, beyond the police, the 21st century is where everything changes and my Torchwood collection has expanded considerably over this lockdown period. Oops. We start off with a release I've had in my collection for quite a number of years. It is Torchwood 1 Before the Fall, a really great box set dealing with Torchwood in Canary Wharf. Tracy Ann Oberman is incredible as Yvonne Hartman, as well as a younger variation of Yanto Jones. And Torchwood 1 Latter Days, one of the more recent releases as a part of the series, dealing with Torchwood employment and how being employed for Torchwood basically affects your personal life. There is a lot of great episodes within this one. There is uh, The Rockery, which is an episode focused around Yvonne Hartman talking to her mother about her life. Again, lots of references to new series Doctor Who. And there is also a retirement plan as written by Gareth David Lloyd, which is an incredibly humorous story that I absolutely adored and was laughing quite a lot too when I initially listened to it. Next up, we move on to an area of my collection that is completely brand new and has simply started due to the COVID-19 lockdown. I wanted some small audio dramas to listen to and the Tortured Main Range was an absolute joy to begin with because there's loads of brilliant stories stories throughout that that are simply so easy to put on and enjoy and not need to worry about any arcs or anything like that. Starting off with one of the releases I've had my eye on for a very long time, it is One Rule as written by Joseph Lister and it's basically a prequel to Tortured One. I recommend checking out my review of that. Next up we have an Eve Miles story as Gwen Cooper. More than this as written by Guy Adams taking place after the TV show itself as Gwen decides to rebuild Torchwood in the absence of Jack. One of the darkest stories in the Big Finish catalogue which is Corpse Day, as written by James Goss. I've had this one recommended to me for quite a long time, and it is a brilliant story, and Owen Harper is incredible in it, along with Sergeant Andy Davison, and I really want to get around to reviewing that one at some point. And annoyingly, the case is smashed. It arrived like that, and it's really annoying. I need to replace it eventually. I have another release that I've listened to recently. It is Goodbye Piccadilly, as written by James Goss, one of the debut episodes for Norton Fallgate. A fun release with lots of personality that I really enjoyed listening to. Another one of my first tortured releases was Night of the Fendal, as written by Tim Foley. A great story. I really did enjoy this one. And of course, a nice blend between Doctor Who and the darkness of the image of the Fendal. However, because it's tortured, they're really able to dig into that quite deeply, unlike how Doctor Who was able to. Next up is a release that I bought simply because the cover art interested me. It is The Green Life. John Barrowman meets Katie Manning. What is not to like? Of course, a sequel to the third Doctor story, The Green Death. I'm looking forward to listening to that one. I have a Susie Costello story, Sync, as written by Lisa McMullen. Of course, seeing the return of Margaret Blaine, the Slovene from Doctor Who Series 1. Again, I'll be listening to that one fairly soon. Then we have The Hope, once again featuring Bern Gorman as Dr. Owen Harper. Another rather bleak story for Dr. Owen Harper, dealing with a murderer who knows where the bodies are hidden on a Welsh Moor. It's a very atmospheric piece. Then we have Smashed as written by James Goss once again. This is an episode that I reviewed in the later half of 2019. I do believe around October. Absolutely love it. It features Gwen being intoxicated and needing to drink to save the world. It is quite a joy to listen to but again very dark talking about how certain parts of society have been left. And then finally for the current range of Dissected as written by Tim Foley seeing Martha Jones and Gwen Cooper basically dissect as the title suggests. A 
dead body and trying to figure out how he died. A great character piece and a lot of fun. I would love to add tropical beach sounds and relaxing seascapes to my collection eventually because I reviewed that one earlier this year and I absolutely adored it. It's one of my personal favourite Big Finish audios and I want it to add to the shelf at some point. The problem with filming a Big Finish collection video over a period of time is you end up updating your collection whilst you are filming the very video. So here we have a collection update within the collection update. I now have all three volumes of Torchwood Aliens Among Us within my collection. Of course the Torchwood continuation series on Big Finish after the events of Miracle Day. At the current time of filming I've just finished listening to volume one. It was very good, highly recommend it. I've just started listening to volume two and hopefully in the transition of the end of summer and me moving back to university I would have ended up finishing volume three as well. So yes overall it's been a very strong series so far and hopefully at some point in the future I will end up reviewing this series so do of course stay tuned for that. And whilst we are on the subject of a collection update, also in the delivery along of Aliens Among Us Volume 3, we have a very recent 2020 release being the Sixth Doctor and Perry Adventures Volume 1, a box set that I've reviewed very recently. Lots of strong stories within this one and a lot of fun to listen to, especially if you are a fan of the Sixth Doctor. So now we move on to a number of Big Finish's special releases that come out every so often to celebrate certain events within the Big Finish catalogue, starting off with the absolutely brilliant box set that is the Sixth Doctor Last Adventure, a much more worthy end for old Sixie as the Doctor as he regenerates into Sylvester McCoy, also featuring Michael Jaston as the Valyard, as well as the Jago and Lightfoot story stage fright. Of course, being a massive Sixth Doctor fan, I absolutely adore this release and it is still available to be purchased on the Big Finish website move on to new series releases with the adventures of David Tennant as the 10th Doctor, starting off with the Catherine Tate Volume 1 set, which does of course feature Technophobia, Time Reaver and Death and the Queen. This is now sold out on the Big Finish website. Moving on swiftly to the next set of David Tennant adventures, this time around starring Billy Piper as Rose Tyler in Volume 2, featuring Infamy of the Zaros, Sword of the Chevalier, and of course Cold Vengeance, featuring the return of the Ice Warriors. And then finally we have the third set of Tenth Doctor Adventures, this time round once again starring Catherine Tate in No Place, The Creeping Death, and One Mile Down. I'm actually quite surprised to see that the next set of Tenth Doctor Adventures alongside River Song, Alex Kingston, is not one of these special box set releases. I do believe it's just a regular slipcase, which is a little bit of a shame as I wouldn't have minded forking out a little bit more money to add that to the collection to go alongside these collector's booklets. Finally, for the special releases, we have the 20th anniversary special of Doctor Who at Big Finish, which is the six-part epic that is the Legacy of Time, featuring multiple incarnations of the Doctor, an absolutely massive cast list from both classic series and new series Doctor Who, with lots of familiar faces and surprises. This is the limited edition collector set variation, featuring loads of discs there in the background in a lovely collector's case. This was limited edition to 4,000 units, and it is now sold out on the Big Finish website. However, you can still get the Legacy of Time physically. It's just a standard regular box set in a usual CD case. However, this is a lovely collector's item and a great celebration of the many different achievements of Doctor Who at Big Finish. And finally, for this Big Finish collection showcase, we move on to the audio dramas that I have within the vinyl LP format. These were, of course, exclusive to retailers throughout the UK, the likes of HMV, Asda and Sainsbury's, and were released around 2018 and 2019. We've not seen any releases in 2020, most likely because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we start off with the first release within the series being Energy of the Daleks, as written by Nicholas Briggs, featuring, of course, Tom Baker and Louise. Jameson is Sainsbury's exclusive. Next up we have another Fourth Doctor story, Zygon Hunt, as written by Nicholas Briggs. Then we move on to the third Fourth Doctor story within the series, being Wave of Destruction, as written by Justin Richards, and it does of course feature Lala Ward as Romana Toon. Now we move on to the Tenth Doctor adventures, starting off with the Volume 1 story, Death and the Queen, as written by James Goss. This is a clear LP vinyl that was exclusive to HMV. Next up we move on to another HMV exclusive, the 
yellow LP vinyl for Infamy of the Zaros, as written by John Dorney, the volume 2 story, featuring Billy Piper as Rose Tyler, as well as Camille Kodori as Jackie Tyler. Now this, as I mentioned, is a vibrant LP that is yellow, and sadly, when I first played this LP, I found out that there was a massive scratch down it, meaning that it was completely unplayable. And Demon Music Group, who produced these vinyl records, very kindly sent me the test pressing for this release. Now, of course, the most notable thing with this vinyl is that it doesn't have an actual proper front cover, but also the original release is a vibrant yellow. And as you can see here, this is a black 180 gram pressing vinyl. So it's rather rare, and it's something of which I'm very happy to have in my collection, and I am very thankful for. So thank you to DMG for sending me that. Next up, we have another 10th Doctor story called Vengeance, as written by Matt Fitton. Once again, another volume 2 story. And then, of course, finally, we have the volume 3 episode starring Catherine Tate as Donna Noble, and it is The Creeping Death, as written by Roy Gilm. There was also a release of the 8th Doctor and Lucy Miller story, Max Warp, which I do have as a part of my collection. However, long story short, it is at the other end of the UK, because I was very busy when that record was released. I was at university, and my friend Macaulay very kindly bought it for me. And of course, due to lockdown in the UK and COVID-19, I was initially intending on going down this summer and collecting it. However, sadly, I've not been to London this summer, so it will be in my collection eventually. However, I do own the CD currently anywhere. And ending off this big finish collection video for 2020, most definitely on a high, as we have a product that I'm very happy to own, and it is of course the amazing, brilliant, one of the best Doctor Who stories of all time, the Fifth Doctor Adventure Spare Parts, as written by Mark Platt. This was of course a celebratory LP collector set release that was exclusive to the Big Finish website, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It features a new cover and everything, and I've reviewed it, and I love it, I'm really happy to have it as a part of my collection. And finally, to go alongside spare parts, we have the record collector set for the equally popular story, The Chimes of Midnight, as written by Robert Sherman, featuring Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor, another celebratory limited edition release that I've only just added to my collection very recently, and as a result, I've not done a product review for it as of yet. Basically, long story short, the Big Finish website put up on Twitter that they had very limited stock of this set left, and of course, with it being limited, once it is sold out, out, it is sold out for good, much like how the limited edition Light at the End LP collector set was, so I decided to purchase it, and as a result, it is now out of stock, and most likely spare parts will be soon to follow. So yes, I'm very happy to have this as a part of my collection to go alongside spare parts, and hopefully one day I'll be able to revisit this story and review it. And there we have it, my physical Big Finish CD collection as of August 2020. I hope you have enjoyed it. Hopefully this video has gave you a few ideas of releases to look out for in the future. And of course we have a lot to look forward to from Big Finish over the next few months and into 2021. Of course the move from the Big Finish main range into the box sets, as well as the continuation of the 8th Doctor adventures, and very excitingly the return of Christopher Eccleston as the 9th Doctor. And as always with Big Finish, much, much more on top of that as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Of course, it has been a little bit longer to usual, pretty much a one hour special. However, hopefully, as I say, this video has gave you a few ideas of releases to look out for in the future. And chances are, if I've spoke about a certain box set throughout this video, I've most likely reviewed it. So check out the different reviews that I've done for Big Finish over the past few years to get a few additional opinions. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And do, of course, stay tuned on the host productions for brand new Doctor Who Big Finish content each and every week. Stay safe, have a nice day, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.